Hi everybody and welcome back to our channel. I'm Sarah, a Canadian that's been living in Croatia now for 11 years. Um, today I'm going to go on and do a part two of what to know before visiting Croatia. If you haven't watched part one, go ahead and watch that now. I'll put it up here or you can watch it after, whatever suits you. But definitely check out that one. It's got a lo lot of good tips. So now we're going to go into part two because we've come up with even more tips you should know before visiting Croatia. Croatia is now on the Euro. We used to be on the Kuna, but as of January 1st, 2023, Croatia is officially on the Euro. So that makes it much more convenient if you're traveling from another country uh, that is also on the Euro. You don't have to worry about exchanging into Kunas when you get here. You can just keep on using your Euro. Uh, the euro is just also a much more widely used currency, so if you have some leftover from your trip, um, it's not like you have to figure out what to do with it because once you're back in Europe again, you can easily use them. So Croatia is on the euro and that has changed since this year, 2023. Croatia is now also in the Schengen area, and that means there are no borders anymore between Croatia and other Schengen area countries. So for example, if you're in Croatia and you want to do a day trip to Slovenia, which is also in the Schengen area, there's no border crossing, so no passport control. It's much quicker and faster just to pass through. Or if you're flying directly from another Schengen area country, that's also simpler now, uh, just because they're both in the area. That being said, if you want to take a day trip to, say, a city in Bosnia or Montenegro, the border checks could be a little bit stricter, so wait times at the borders between non-Schengen area countries and Croatia could be a bit longer. So keep that in mind when you're planning on doing a day trip outside of Croatia to a non-Schengen country. If you do decide to take a day trip to Montenegro or to Mostar, um, I would suggest really, really leaving early, um, as early as possible so you miss the, well, not miss, but you get lighter border traffic um, because the traffic is a bit heavier these days, especially in peak season. So if you're coming July, August, uh, just try to leave as early, early, early as you can and then you'll just get through a lot easier than, than leaving later in the day, of course. Krka National Park. It's a beautiful national park here in Croatia and you should definitely check it out. But just keep in mind you can't swim in the lake with the waterfalls anymore. This happened a few years ago already. It's been prohibited swimming in the lake. But a lot of people still see these pictures floating around on the internet of everybody enjoying themselves in the lake with the waterfalls. So I see those pictures everywhere still and people come here and they think that you can still swim in the lake, but you cannot. So it's been prohibited for safety reasons and you can no longer swim in the lake. So keep that in mind. I know that that is some people's big motivation for going to that park is to be able to swim in that natural beauty, but unfortunately you no longer can. So just have that in mind if you're planning a trip, a day trip to Krka National Park. A lot of people also ask us about Plitvice National Park, the other big, beautiful national park here in Croatia, probably the most visited national park in Croatia, and if you can swim there. And the answer is also no. Uh, you cannot swim in that national park either. Uh, it's just for walking through, enjoying the beauty, um, and just, I think it keeps it very clean when no swimming is allowed. But one thing you can do if you're visiting Plivica National Park and you want to go swimming afterwards, if you're on the way to Zagreb, there's a little spot um, in Rastoke village where you can swim. There's a little area in Slunčica River and you can swim there. And that makes the most sense to do that if you're going to continue on to Zagreb because it's really on the way from Plitvice to Zagreb. Restaurant reservations. Please, please, please make restaurant reservations well in advance for good restaurants in popular locations. These restaurants really do book up and if you try to get a reservation a day or two days or three days in advance, if it's a good restaurant in a good location, you probably won't get in. Um, I really, really suggest making your reservations at least a couple weeks in advance um, in order to secure the restaurants that you want to visit, especially if they're high in your list and if they are, you know, quite popular restaurants in the area, do yourself a favor and make yourself a reservation. Um, you can usually email the restaurant or call them directly and a lot of them just take reservations by phone or email like that. And there are some that even take them directly online. If you go to their uh, website, a lot of them will take online reservations through the website form. So whatever you do, if you have some restaurants you're hoping to visit, I know a lot of you are foodies that come to Croatia, then please make reservations in advance. Another thing a lot of our guests ask us 
is about flights to Croatia. What are the best flights to take? What's the easiest way to get here? The fewest layovers, etc. So um, for those of you that don't know, there are a couple direct flights from North America. Mostly our North American guests ask, ask us this. There are definitely, obviously, lots of direct flights from inside Europe or other places, but from North America, uh, there's a direct flight from New York to Dubrovnik with United Airlines, I believe. Um, and then from Toronto to Zagreb, there are direct flights in this season um, with Air Transat. So there are a couple combinations you can do making direct flights directly from North America to Croatia. Another piece of advice I will give is that Ryanair has now expanded its uh, flight offerings into and out of Croatia. And actually Zagreb has become, has become kind of like a regional hub with Ryanair and they really do fly to a lot of places within Europe. So if you can find a really good flight to Europe once you're here, you might be able to get a really affordable flight within Europe coming to Croatia. So check out Ryanair. They have flights often for 10, 20, 30, 30 euros. The applications Wolt and Glovo are really, really popular here. Um, if you are having, you know, a quiet evening, you don't really feel like going out to a restaurant or to go get something to eat, you can order food online or really anything um, through Glovo or Wolt. And so they're just basically delivery apps. So download them on your phone before you get here or while you're here um, if you need anything delivered and they're really fast, efficient, and really don't cost too much. So if you are feeling tired from having a long day of exploring and you just don't really feel like going to find something to eat, use Wolt or Glovo and they'll do the trick. Um, another two apps that I will mention are Uber and Bolt and they are obviously driving apps and so if you don't want to rent a car and you want to get somewhere you can definitely use those apps in the bigger cities. Um, the islands not so much but in the bigger cities on the mainland Uber and Bolt are pretty widespread I'd say um, and so you shouldn't have a problem finding uh, drive um, if and when you need one. The good thing about these apps are you will obviously know the price ahead of time. Say you arrive at the airport in Zagreb or Dubrovnik or Split and uh, you need a ride instead of taking a taxi where you're really not sure what the price is going to be. Of course Uber gives you the price ahead of time and so it just makes it a little more reassuring in your mind that you're getting a fair price. Um, and that you know what you're going to expect to pay. So definitely check them out if you need a ride anywhere or to the airport or um, just around town. Itinerary planning. Here's just a really quick uh, piece of advice. So a lot of people start either in Zagreb and or in Split and then they go down the coast to Dubrovnik or vice versa. And um, sometimes it can get expensive to get a flight into one city and out of the next city to go back home. So instead, you could do a round trip, say from Zagreb or from Dubrovnik, but you could fly into Zagreb, work your way down the coast to Dubrovnik, and then the day before leaving, take a short internal flight with Croatian Airlines. They have a few flights per day between those cities. They're very affordable, and then that will just get you back up to Zagreb, say the night before, um, to take your flight to go back home that you booked from the round trip, if that makes sense. I hope that made sense. Um, I just know that a lot of our guests want to plan round trip flights from the same city rather than into one city and out of the next. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so those are some more of our tips that we've kind of accumulated over the past little while. If you have any other really good tips, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will add them to an eventual part three video. Uh, but for now, parts one and two are complete and so I hope that they're helpful when you're preparing for your trip and we, of course, hope you have a wonderful, wonderful time in Croatia. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.